Hey everybody, you are live. This is Winning Wednesday and we are doing a pharmacology spotlight of a very, very, very important medication that I want to dive a little bit deeper in today. This is tetracycline night. This is tetracycline night. I'm really happy to be here with you guys. I was in my VT workbook taking all kinds of notes and I said, let's pause for the cause. And because we're doing RNU and we're focusing on medications, we are going to get into tetracyclines. You guys know it's an antibiotic and we about to get into it. Yeah, yeah. So I want to start by saying, welcome everybody. You made it, you made it. Tag your favorite friend. And if it's your first time watching, my name is Regina and you are learning about stuff to help you pass NCLEX and get your nursing license because that is what it is all about here at Remar Review. And the more you learn, the better prepared you will be. So my lives are not for everybody, but if you are willing to study with a great community and learn new things and answer a bunch of NCLEX questions, this is the place for you. So if you subscribe, to my YouTube channel or like my Facebook page, you will find me here studying with you on Wednesdays or Mondays or Saturdays, wherever. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Winnie Wednesday. We're going to get into it. So the, the, don't be intimidated by the language, but antibiotics carry antimicrobial effects by targeting bacterial ribosomes and inhibiting bacterial protein synthesis. So essentially, when you think of a bacteria, bacteria, they have, uh, they have DNA structures just like you and I, right? And so their DNA structure tells the cells to replicate in certain ways. Um, and specifically, protein synthesis happens in bacteria to help them to grow. So antibiotics, are either targeting, antibacterials <laughs> are targeting the, the replication of that bacteria. And so when we're talking about tetracyclines, tetracyclines specifically focus on protein synthesis and stopping it from happening. So that's all that the introduction is trying to say. So I'm going to go back to it. So tetracyclines cause toxic effects as a result of interactions with mitochondrial mammalian ribosomes, since the structure of mitochondrial ribosomes more closely resembles bacterial ribosomes. Okay, so this is taking you to back to your uh, definitely back to your anatomy class from the very, very cellular components and structures that we learned about. And we are talking about tetracyclines and how they are effective. So we always can learn a lot about a disease or a medication by its name. You don't have to go very far to understand what a tetracycline means or what it does. So we know that tetra means four. So there are structurally four rings, four cyclic rings that are fused together, right? And so that is what we see. That's why we call them tetracycline. Now, tetracyclines again work by um, entering into the cell. Okay, they they enter into the cell and they bind to what is called the 30 subunit ribosome. Right. And you don't have to know this in detail, but some of you really like to study with me and you like to absorb uh, foundational information about something. And so when the tetracycline is binding to these ribosomes, it prevents the tRNA right? Um, and the messenger RNA from communicating, right? So that transfer RNA and the messenger RNA, they communicate to create protein synthesis. So a tetracycline is going to shut all that down. It's going to get into the way of that. And that is great for us, but bad for the bacteria because then the bacteria cannot replicate. And so again, 
This is how the tetracycline is very effective. And because it's so effective, we consider tetracycline what kind of antibio um, antibiotic? Is it a broad spectrum or is it a narrow spectrum? Broad spectrum meaning tetracyclines can treat a lot of different things or do tetracyclines treat just a few things? What you guys say? Are tetracyclines broad spectrum or narrow spectrum? Hey, everybody, you are now studying with Remar Review. And we this is a topic that is in my virtual trainer book. And so I'm just spending some time to go a little bit more into it because I really enjoyed it, right? Um, I really enjoyed it. And I love this question. Uh, yes, yeah, so tetracyclines are bacterial static because they do, they inhibit protein synthesis. So yeah, what we're doing here is just a small version of my full lecture, which you guys can find in my NCLEX virtual trainer. And this is where I go into much more detail about the topics that you need to know for NCLEX. So that is my online program that you are seeing that you can jump into right now um, to get the full course for my NCLEX review. And also, um, if you guys don't know, we have a free trial of my NCLEX virtual trainer happening right now. And the way to get to that is to go to remarnurse.com forward slash free, forward slash free, and you can get a free trial of my full course. So yes, it is possible. So we're talking about, we're talking about how tetracyclines work. We're talking about how tetracyclines work. And I did hear you guys say that, yes, this is a broad spectrum anti, um, antibacterial properties. So tetracyclines, because they are bacterial static, they are effective against a wide variety of organisms. All right. Gram positive and gram negative. Gram positive and gram negative. So you have Chlora, chlamydia infections, Lyme disease. This is why you have to know if for NCLEX because it can treat a lot of different things. So um, many different types of patients can be on a tetracycline. So um, Lyme disease, tetracyclines are used to also treat um, pneumonia, but atypical types of pneumonia. So mycoplasma pneumonia uh, would be one. Rocky Mountain spotted fever, also uh, anthrax, tetracyclines can treat anthrax and acne, <laughs> okay. lots of things, leprosy, I'm trying to think of all the things that tetracyclines can treat, uh, but yeah, this is, uh, this is to be given to many types of patients, and so no matter what unit you tend to work on, whether you're in a pediatric unit, or your med surge, or you're in a STD clinic, uh, wherever you are going to be nursing, you may be giving or administering tetracyclines. So you got to know about it. Okay. All right. So knowing, 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 knowing that it treats many different things, it's, it's also good to know how it is going to affect the body in combination of treating these conditions. All right, hearts up on the screen. Also hit the share button on this video. I definitely want more students to come on. People don't know we study on a Wednesday night. They they don't know that we are a very uh, we are a very interesting group where we, when it comes to hump day, we get over the hump by learning stuff. That's what we do, All right? So when you give a medication, you want to know the pharmacokinetics of the medication. Pharmacokinetics just essentially means how, how it's absorbed by the body, right? How it is distributed and how it is eliminated, how it is distributed and how it is eliminated. And so, um, you know, there are many types of tetracyclines, but let's just look at some examples of them. So um, minocycline is used because it is going to be very therapeutic in the cerebral spinal fluid. Okay, so cerebral spinal fluid, that means that tetracyclines can be used to treat things like uh, meningitis. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's some great, uh, there is some great things to know about tetracyclines, including how it can be given, right? So it can be given IV, it can be given IM. All right. Um, also, typically, a tetracycline is going to be excreted via the bio, the in bio, all right, which will also come out through the urine. Okay. Coming from Bible study, thought I was late. I just like to press the like button. I'm very grateful for this teaching. Awesome. I'm so glad you made it to Bible study. So glad you made it to Bible study. That's pretty amazing. Okay. So yeah, we're expecting tetracyclines to be excreted through the liver. It's primarily eliminated in, I'm sorry, in the urine, in the urine. So clients who have renal compromise, right? Clients who have renal compromise, we have to be careful about giving them, we have to be careful about giving them a tetracycline. Other nursing considerations for tetracyclines are these, okay? Clients who have um, contact with tetracyclines, they may have some GI upset. Also, tetracyclines can cause issues in clients who are, it says, calcified tissues, right? Clients who are developing calcified tissues, which typically are your pediatric clients because essentially their bones are still developing, right? Their bones are still developing. So tetracyclines, and you guys can add your notes to these things. I wanna see your comments on the screen. I wanna see what you know. Um, we avoid giving, we avoid giving tetracyclines because it has the ability to deposit itself in bone and teeth, all right? And the calcification process is usually happening in growing children. And so when you have the, the use of tetracyclines in pediatrics, it can actually stunt the growth. It can actually cause the, the bones to not grow properly in the teeth. What do we know about what tetracyclines do to the teeth of our patient? Okay. Hepatotoxicity. In high doses, tetracyclines may affect the, um, the hepatic function and cause renal impairment. Yes, nephrotoxicity as well. And so also we have phototoxicity. So there's many, many issues when we're talking about tetracyclines. We were talking about we were talking about how great they are because we can give them if a patient has chlamydia, if a patient comes in with anthrax, if a patient has leprosy, we can give them, you know, Lyme disease, we can give them a tetracycline and that's great, but you better tell them what the side effects are going to be because that is also a part of proper medication administration. So we have to know these things. Um, we also have some issues with phototoxicity where um, particularly the, the patient may develop a sun sensitivity, they may develop a rash, usually it's going to present that way because their skin is just very sensitive. So it will be like a sunburn, right? And this occurs with exposure to the sun or any ultraviolet ray. So clients have to adapt when they are on a tetracycline. They have to wear adequate sun protection, things like that. This is very important. Uh, vestibular dysfunction, Vestibular dysfunction is the idea that tetracyclines can also cause tinnitus, vertigo, dizziness, and this is just a result of it just building up, really, the, the medication building up in the, in, the, in the endolymph nodes, right? And so this is what you have to be aware of. This is what you have to be aware of, okay? Thank you. I see you guys are adding things to this adding things to my lecture. And I love it, love it, love it. Because we're all here to learn. Almost 500 people. Um, pseudotumor cerebri. And this is um, a benign intracranial hypertension that can happen. And it can be, if the patient starts complaining of a headache or blurry vision, 
Tetracyclines can also cause this to our patient, okay? Great question. Somebody answer Alexandra. I love this question. Is tetracycline the same as penicillin? That is such a great question um, because they both are, um, they both are definitely antibiotics. They both are definitely antibiotics, but you will learn very different things about penicillin and tetracyclines. So for your NCLEX exam, make sure you know all the things that we're talking about for tetracyclines, but also take some time and um, get into your drug reference book about penicillins or do yourself a bigger favor and just take my full NCLEX review because I talk about the difference between tetracyclines, penicillins, and aminoglycosides. Definitely have to know that. Okay, we are moving on. Again, uh, some of you guys mentioned this already and I kind of spotlighted it for you. Um, contraindications means, we're talking about tetracyclines, we mean, no, no, don't give tetracyclines. Don't give tetracyclines to uh, this group. Number one is the pregnant women and children, specifically children less than eight years of age. I've seen some people say 12. They just want to be very, very careful. <laughs> but um, we want to definitely avoid pediatrics because of what we talked about before, where it was the bone calcification not being finished in children, and then tetracyclines um, can cause all birth defects. So we don't want to give this to our patient. Okay, so listen, this is how you study content. It, it is a matter of not just doing questions about a topic, but literally going back, looking at, um, looking at the actions, looking at the pharmacokinetics, looking at how the medication is excreted, where you can find it, side effects. This is how you study for NCLEX. There are topics that you have to literally sit down with and review, and then you can do questions. So since we did that, since we just looked at a lot of the content, now I feel prepared to ask you all questions. So here is our first question. Are you ready? Fast fingers. It is this. The nurse is caring for a client having Lyme disease and is planned to be started with tetracycline. The following are also indicated for this medication except, number one, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, two, cholera, three, tularemia, four, chlamydia. So which one essentially would we not be giving, which one would we not be giving a tetracycline for? And again, we know this because we went over the content. If I would have just broke you guys off with some questions, it, this would have been un unnecessarily difficult because we didn't study it. So why would I be giving you questions if we haven't studied it first? So we always wanna study the topic and then do the questions. Welcome to Remar Review. This is how we get down. This is how we get down. <laughs> Good job, everybody. I see the right answer on the screen. Even if you don't know what this is, you didn't, you knew that it wasn't on our list tonight. So the correct answer is indeed number three, tularemia. And so that is going to be treated with aminoglycosides, which are different. So Penicillins and penicillins and aminoglycosides are different. Okay. And look up this, look up this condition if you don't know what it is. It is um, something you guys are not gonna probably have to worry about in terms of ever catching, but you need to know what it is. All right, next question is this. Let's see how you all do. Okay. Um, the nurse is providing health education to client who is prescribed with tetracycline. The health teaching plan will include, bam, what it will include. All right, let me read it again. The nurse is providing health education to a client who is prescribed tetracycline. The health teaching plan will include, number one, discourage the client to take dairy products with tetracycline. Two, it is safe to use for pregnant and breastfeeding 
Mothers, three, advise the client to take tetracycline with an empty stomach. Ooh, this is good. Mm. Four, encourage the client to sun exposure for faster absorption. Oh my goodness. Mm, mm, mm. This is a good one. And you know what? This is one of those questions where I didn't. <laughs> oh, this is so tough. Hmm. What do you guys think? Let's see the answers. But I'm looking to see. Um, cause I didn't specifically give you the direct answer to this question. So if you don't get this question right, then you definitely need to do content review. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Cause this is like a general thing about tetracyclines. And actually, as I'm seeing the con, as I, as I am looking at the comments on the screen, I kind of agree that there might be, I'm going to explain it. I think you guys might have two answers that I could have that were right now that I'm seeing. But you guys let me know if you're thinking this way. Okay, so the correct answer that I have here um, is going to be number one. All right, number one. So discouraging the client to take dairy products with tetracycline. So no, yeah, number two definitely was not it. Right. So clients should not take dairy products with tetracycline because dairy interferes with the effectiveness of tetracyclines. I know it's weird. And I tried to like find a simple way to explain it, but I just couldn't. And I didn't really feel like it was necessary for us to know all of the binding and things like that. So just in general teaching, we don't encourage our clients to take dairy products with tetracyclines. So that's overall, like that's in general, we don't do that. Hmm. The other thing is I saw some people picking number three. Hmm. So number three is tough because, let me go back to it. Number three says advising clients to take tetracyclines with an empty stomach. So, um, a lot of people pick this and I, I'm i struggling to allow it to be okay because some tetracyclines you do need to take on an empty stomach. Some tetracyclines you do need to take on an empty stomach. However, there's other tetracyclines like doxycycline. That you could take it with food and it doesn't cause any issues um, or you won't get the GI irritation. And so I'm struggling. But the correct, like, it's one of those things where it's like, what's the most correct answer? You know how you get that on NCLEX? Like, what is the best or the most correct answer? The most correct answer is going to be number one. But then number three is like, oh, you could kind of argue that it could be right in some instances. But no, we got to go. We got to go with number one for this one. I got to go with number one. OK, yeah, three is not general. I know it's so specific. So um, for those of you who pick number three, I thought that you you just know a lot like, you know, about the different classes there. There's like. There's three different classes of tetracyclines. And so, man, mm, you got to you got to pick the, the most correct answer. Ah, NCLEX. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. All right. So let's do another question. This was just actually question number two. So we have some more. Let me go to this one. Yeah. All right. Number three. Tetracycline binds with tissues undergoing calcification. For this reason, it is contraindicated to, number one, clients with dental implants, two, growing children below eight years old, <laughs> three, clients undergoing hemodialysis, or four, Female teenagers. Oh, after studying the content, you definitely got to get this one right. Okay. You definitely got to get this one right. And I definitely agree. NCLEX, 
Have mercy on us, please, right now, right now. Have mercy, please, please, please. I'll change when my son, when my son wants something, he's so funny. He'll be like, "Mommy, please, I'll change, baby, I'll change." We have to do that with NCLEX, like, please, we'll change. So, um, tetracycline. So it's going to be contraindicated to the children below age eight years old. All right, um, and that is because we talked about this, how um, it affects the bones and the calcification process. Also, um, remember, tetracyclines can be given to treat acne. So it is very popular amongst teenagers, uh, female and male. The only thing you have to ask, and, and I want you to put it on the, on the comments, if tetracycline is prescribed to a female teenager, what do we have to ask? What do we have to ask? We have to ask what? I'm looking for the comments on the screen. If, if and when tetracycline is prescribed to a female teenager, what do we care about? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We care about if they are pregnant. Yes, if they are pregnant or maybe not even if they're pregnant, but if they are even sexually active. So we need to know, are you on some type of contraceptive? Because you absolutely need to be if you are going to be taking tetracycline for acne. Okay, that's it. You guys are going to be great nurses. I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it. Okay, question number four. A nurse, a nurse is about to administer tetracycline, which lab values below would prompt the nurse to defer the medication. Okay. Elevated creatinine level. Elevated white blood cell count. Low platelet count low hemoglobin count. Okay, this is very good. Very, very, very good question here. Which lab value would prompt a deferring of the medication? Which lab value? Okay, would prompt that. I see a lot of people. Are we on the same page? I like it when we're on the same page. I really do. I really, really like it. Not sure, Marissa. I'm not sure about number. Okay. Well, we, we'll talk about it. Let's go over it. The correct answer is actually, um, it's actually number one. And remember, remember when we talked about how um, because tetracyclines are um, excreted in the urine. It is the it is the job of the kidneys to make sure that it is excreted. And so if there's already kidney um, compromise, we would not want to give this medication. It's okay. Yeah, it, it's all right. If you guys, a lot of you guys maybe are new, new viewers and don't beat yourselves up for not knowing this information. Part of being a student is learning. If you knew everything, then you would already be a nurse. And that's not what it's about. Even as a nurse, even as a nurse who's been a nurse for about 12 years now, I'm still learning new stuff all the time about the human body, about these medications. And so we are here to learn. We are here to learn. All right. So there's there's no shame in the game right here. OK. I want you to get all the answers wrong here. Listen, I want you to get every answer wrong here if it means you get one answer right on your NCLEX exam. So this is the place where we practice. Whew. Okay, all right. Now I have, I have another question for you guys. Let's give it a try. The client reports easily, oh, the client reports easily got sunburn while it's um, the second day of using tetracycline. The nurse's best response would be, would be, you should discontinue taking the medication. The medication can be phototoxic, hence must wear sun protection. 
This is very unlikely you must go to the ER. Perhaps you are experiencing an overdose of the medication. What is the best response by the nurse here in this situation? The client says, hey, I'm getting sunburned way too easily. I was out on the beach. It's 4th of July, wherever. And I need you to help me. I need you to help me. Help me. So what are you guys saying? Uh, people are picking number two. I think number two is right. The medication can be phototoxic. Hence, you have to change your lifestyle, all right? This requires a lifestyle change. So severe sunburn may occur in clients receiving a tetracycline who are exposed to the sun or ultraviolet rays. Like, um, So the combination of tetracycline and dem demiclocycline frequently results in phototoxicity. So clients should be advised to wear adequate sun protection. Hey, I am loving all of the students. Over 600 of you have studied and I have a Remar nurse who recently passed with um, my class and I hope you guys are all going to take it coming up soon too. As soon as I finished nursing school, I decided to try Remar Review to prepare for NCLEX. And so I purchased the virtual trainer NCLEX as well as the quick facts. And I really enjoy the way Regina teaches everything you need to know for NCLEX. Everything is well organized and it prepares you for NCLEX basically. Uh, it, it gives you all the information you need to know and I has and clicks on my first attempt. So thank you, Regina, for all of your help. And I highly recommend it. <laughs> okay, okay. Did you guys hear my, did you guys hear? I hope you did. It was a short testimonial. You know the guys. The guys are usually straight to the point. Like, I used this. It worked for me. I still love it. <laughs> I still love the testimonials. It's my ladies. When we get on there, it's like we pour out our entire hearts and we tell the story and we know the, the backstory. We know the behind the scenes. We know the first time you ever had chocolate. We know everything about how you became a nurse. And I love it. You know what? If you guys are ready to get. As soon as I finished nursing school, I decided to try Remar Review to prepare for NCLEX. And so I purchased the virtual trainer NCLEX as well as the quick facts. And I really enjoy the way Regina teaches everything you need to know for NCLEX. Everything is well organized and it prepares you for NCLEX basically. Uh, it, it gives you all the information you need to know. And I pass NCLEX on my first attempt. So thank you, Regina, for all of your help. And I highly recommend it. I was just like, okay, <laughs> live video. You guys can text me. That's what I want to show you. My phone number. You guys can text me right now. Um, and I will talk to you directly. Oh, answer your NCLEX questions. This is how you do it. Text me at 855 696 Oh, one, three, two. It's a new way. I'm trying this new thing where you guys want to, um, you want to have your information. You want to know what's best. And so I want you to text me, give it a try and save the number, save the number in my, in your phone, 855-696-0132 and put Regina there. Screenshot this screenshot this number because this is what I'm using now to get to me. All right. So, hey guys, this has been Winning Wednesday. I am definitely, I am definitely coming back on to study with you again. 
I'm definitely coming back on study with you again. But for those of you who want to do the full course right now and see the lectures right now for my NCLEX review, just go to the NCLEX virtual trainer right there. You're able to jump right into it. And whether you're a registered nurse or a practical nurse, just click on your training center. You get immediate access to all of my wonderful videos. And I promise you that you will feel so much more comfortable um, and you're able to take quizzes like this is a quiz. And remember with the virtual trainer, you have to get a 95% on every quiz in order to pass the quiz. And yes, you can take it over again if you want to. Um, I, I will definitely let you repeat quizzes, but it's all about that accountability. Some nursing students just like to take an NCLEX review course and they don't really have a schedule or an accountability partner, but the virtual trainer is that accountability partner for you. So whatever you are struggling with, check out my class, because if you're somebody who needs to have a little bit more structure, but you can't make it to a school or you can't sit in somebody else's classroom all day, check out my videos. It's me. It's me giving you the information. So if you can be open-minded about doing something a little bit different, then the VT is for you. All right. The VT is for you. So check it out. And I really like to spotlight. Um, I really like to spotlight the file vault. And inside of your file vault, you can get your daily study calendar. So if you're an RN and you're studying for NCLEX, I give you a week by week, day by day calendar of what you will be doing. Okay. So every day you will know what it is that you need to do. And again, if you can be open minded, and you can get on a study program and try something different, I promise that you will learn the information a lot faster than if you were doing it on your own. So I, I literally break it down to the minute what I want you to do. And just notice how I give you guys rest days because that should definitely be a part of whatever you are um, doing, whatever program you're doing this should be what it looks like. This should be what it feels like. There should be no guesswork in what it is that you are doing for that study session. So if you can sit down and you can look at what it is you're supposed to do, then you can make great, great progress. And again, this is all um, in the VT. So if you have the opportunity, you can try it out. Somebody put the free trial um, link up for me. It is remarnurse.com forward slash free. Remarnurse.com forward slash free. And you are able to jump right into the free trial. So I think it's a three day free trial. And so you have really nothing to lose if you do the free trial. Okay. So if you have more questions about the virtual trainer and how you get into it, guess what? You can text me now. You can text me. All right, and that number is 855-696-0132. You guys are awesome. Today was a good study session. It really, it really gave me a boost today, you know? I didn't know how it was going to be. Tetracyclines is a tough subject. So if you were able to sit through the class and you feel a little bit better about tetracyclines, then we have done our work together. And so any question that you see on NCLEX about tetracyclines, because we studied, because we studied, you now can believe that I can, I will, and I must pass NCLEX right now, right now. All right, see you guys later. The NCLEX Virtual Trainer is the best training system for nursing students who need to pass the exam. My name is Regina Callion, MSN RN, and I have helped thousands of nursing students pass the NCLEX exam with my program. You're gonna love it. With my NCLEX review, I'm going to give you all of my nursing content in one place. Not only that, I'm gonna make sure that after every individual lesson, you know what is most important. And if you need questions to help you, I have the questions right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you an amazing opportunity to get in the virtual trainer. I'm also gonna send you the virtual trainer student workbook, as well as my quick facts for NCLEX. This is it, this is the opportunity 
that you've been waiting for, click the link below. This is the number one training system for nursing students who need to pass NCLEX. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Click the link below. Hey, what are you waiting for? I wanna see you on the inside. This is the opportunity. You don't wanna miss it. If your nursing license is important to you, you will take action right now. Let's click the link, let's go.